Welcome to Violin Adventures number 157. We start off with the Diamond in the Rough. Okay, we're back here and here is our Diamond in the Rough. We're going to prepare it for varnishing. And yes, we only want a very thin, light coat on this so that it doesn't affect the tone. Although the varnish refines the tone even more, so there's a little balance there we have to keep. And on our little machine here, I'm going to write down our plans for this week. To write down my goals for the week. So we're going to work on revarnishing the diamond in the rough. Um, working on the viola, hopefully getting it closed this week. We'll see. And then finishing up the F holes and finding a good base bar. Well, that's what we hope to get done. We'll see what really happens. We're going to get a special box to put all the setup of this violin in. We're ready to get started with the varnishing. Okay, here we are. We're ready to put our first sealer coat on the diamond in the rock. Okay, that makes me feel better already. We do want to be careful not to get too much varnish on here, but we also want the instrument to be protected. And this is a good protective coat now to protect the wood and to preserve that tone. Okay, the first coat is on. Now we're going to go work on the cello just a little bit, get those sound holes going. Working on the wings of the cello and they're all free except one right over here. And I'm, I'm just ready to free this wing. So, okay, here it goes. We're going to free this wing. Ouch. Okay, it's free now. So now comes the fun part. I've got the hard work done. Now I can just work on cleaning this up. So good progress. Okay, now we have got to get this fingerboard off. So this is serious now. Normally, you can just pop these off if you do it just right. <laughs> but this is not giving way. And I'm using heat and I'm heating up my knives and they're still, it's not giving. Okay, I'm going to take a little break and pray to get that off. Okay, an update on getting the fingerboard off. I'm basically going inch by inch, but I wouldn't say inch by inch. It's more like millimeter by millimeter. And I tried some heat, but that didn't seem to make any difference inch by inch and just takes time and patience but guess what guess who won here it broke off my uh, the tip of my little knife which we can correct that we can uh, reshape it but it just shows you how strong this glue is that it would break the knife rather than open up crazy so I'm about uh, about halfway down, but um, not all the way through. 
So when I push this in, So I've been working and working and working and trying to get this off without damaging anything, the fingerboard or the, the neck. So this side is pretty much loose, but... One hour later. Two hours later. I'm just about, I think we're ready to pop off here, so I turned the camera back on. Okay, there it is, not too bad. Finally got that off. The fingerboard. It is ebony, but it's a very um, low quality, I guess. But what I'm gonna do is try to lighten this. this. This is a real heavy piece of wood. See if we can lighten it. Then I'll clean this up, clean up the um, neck and see about getting it back on. Actually, I'll probably wait to put it on till the top is on. That way I can make sure that the angle and everything are correct. This is the sound hole that I'm working on. Just getting this cleaned up and then the fun part here, putting in a lot of flare. So I'm gonna show you now and then get into it and I'll show you when I get it done. Here's where we are. I've got this sound hole finished and I'm just finishing up this one now, doing the fine cuts, getting the nice flare in there. So I always change my knife, especially near the end on all these final cuts. I want everything to be sharp and clean. Okay, we're back at the viola and we're working out a base bar. And you can see this just looks like a crazy little piece of wood, but it's very, it's a very nice piece of spruce. And now I need to fit it to this viola. I'm gonna cut this to shape and I'll be back. We're back. This is looking a little bit better. We're gonna work on shaping this to fit this. So we need a bridge so we can make sure that our uh, base bar is going to go right under the feet of the bridge. Here a nice big box and in the box I'm storing all my bridges. So let's take a look. Here are fractional sizes, these bridges, and then over here we'll be looking for a nice viola bridge. Now we want a bridge that will fit with this Viola, which is a 15 and a half inch. Okay, found a good bridge that has nice bounce. Marked it off in here, and now we can get to fitting. Okay, I'm gonna do this for a good long time, and then it will be done with a snap of a finger. Okay, that didn't take long at all. We've got our base bar fit. Got a nice fit on both sides here. We gotta heat up our hide glue 
and get clamps ready. Make sure that the clamps can fit on this base bar. I may need to take it down in the middle a little bit. And we will get this glued up. Okay, our viola now has a base bar. We're gonna fit that maybe tomorrow, but we're gonna let it dry now for 24 hours. Here's the viola with all its clamps. Okay, I'm going to we have our sealer coat on here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try one coat of oil, and we'll just see if that covers enough or not. Okay, the scroll is turning out nicely and here's the violin looking quite beautiful so we'll let this dry we're taking the clamps off and then we'll start work on the shaping of the base bar Okay, this is our viola, and now we're ready to seal the wood. Okay, there's the two pieces with the sealer coat on, and I just wanted to note how beautiful that piece of wood is. Okay, it's only Thursday, but I wanted to make sure I got this before the leaves fall. Isn't that beautiful? All the shades of red and orange. Okay, some of you are asking how to contact me, and I leave a reply under your question, under your comment. I comment under that, and I tell you how you can contact me. Now, if you can't uh, find that comment. You can contact me at my email address, which is violinsforyou at gmail.com. You can also call me. All my information is on the web, so if you do a search, you can put in Cheryl Mackenberg, violin maker, and all my information will come up that way too. Now we're also working on a new website, which should be getting up shortly. The correct information is the address and phone number in Kentucky. So now I'll leave you the information here on this video so that you can contact me. Okay, I'll look forward to your emails and your calls. Okay, we're ready to close up the viola. The Hebrew Minute. Well, for the Hebrew Minute, it's a little bit different this week because we got our special box from Israel. And just a little bit of background. 
The last feast was the Feast of Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacles. And at the end of that feast, they take out all their scrolls and re-roll them back to Genesis. And they start reading again in Genesis. So this box is starting over in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, the seven days of creation. And I wanted to show you what's inside here. And I'll try to do it real quick so we can keep it close to a minute. Okay, here's the box, and it tells you to pause when you have good time. So we open the box, and the first thing you see is Bereshit. That's the first word of the Torah, which says, In the beginning, and God created the heaven and the earth. The next page says, The earth was unformed and void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved over the face of the waters tohu vabohu and then we get into the package itself and we have here the first day of creation there was light and there's candles in here the second day of creation was the waters divided from the waters and we have some blue water, special medicine. Third day of creation, bringing forth grass and seed and fruit trees. And we have pecan truffles and berry cashews. On the fourth day, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So there's day cream and night cream. On the fifth day, let the waters swarm and let the birds fly. So we have a spice mix for cooking chicken and fish. And this smells really good. On the sixth day, God created man in his image. And what do you think is in here? He but a mirror. On the last day, we have the Shabbat. And this is a little book to read on the Shabbat with some really lovely smelling i think it's lavender hi hi everyone i freddy i freddy and i got another friend mr timothy winters and he is um oh he sent me a video of his his resource library that has all his big sets of commentaries and encyclopedias and he even has a Judaic encyclopedia. It's a little tiny room but he filled it with books from the top to the bottom. So here it goes. Wow! Well, thank you for sending in your videos and pictures. And all my friends out there, don't forget me. Send me your projects. Okay, I better get going. Bye! Well, here it is Friday. And we've had a nice good rain. And probably some more to come. Back in the shop, all is calm and all work has ceased. Here's the cello table, and we've got our sound holes all finished. There they are. And next week, we hope to get to the bass bar. Here's our viola. We just closed it up. So next week, we hope to get the fingerboard on and get it set up. And here's our beautiful diamond in the rough. There's one coat of oil varnish, and it looks like it's doing a good job covering. So we may stop at that, but we'll need to let that dry for at least a week. And over here, 
was our list for the week and it was all accomplished. So we'll tear this one off and have a clean sheet for next week. Thank you so much for watching and for all your wonderful comments and your thumbs up. Thank you so much and to the new subscribers. Until next time, God bless you. Bye.